All right, so in this video, we are going to look at a simple application of Gauss's law. So we will use Gauss's law to prove this very important fact about conductors, uh, which is that when excess charge is placed on an isolated solid conductor, it resides entirely on the surface of the conductor and not in the interior of the material. So we're going to rigorously prove this using Gauss's law. Suppose you have a block of conducting material. It can be any shape and size. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the shape of a block. So suppose you have this block of conducting material like copper. And let's say that you have you charge up this block. How would you charge it? Uh, if you want to charge it up negatively, what you can do is you can take a rubber rod, rub that rubber rod against fur. That would transfer some electrons from the fur to the rubber rod. So the rubber rod will get negatively charged. And then you can rub that rubber rod against this block. And some of the electrons from the rubber rod will now be on the block. And so the block will have excess electrons and it will get negatively charged. So the theorem that we are about to prove states that this excess charge that you just gave this conducting block will reside entirely on the surface of the block. So I'm denoting these extra electrons which you just supplied as these dashes. And these extra, extra electrons will live only on the surface of this block. You won't find any of them in the interior of the block. All right. So in other words, excess charge on an isolated conductor resides only on the surface of the conductor. And what do I mean by isolated? I just mean that it's not connected to anything else. It doesn't have any connection to any other conductors. Okay, so excess charge on an isolated conductor re resides solely on the surface of the conductor. Um, just so we are all on the same page, I'll just quickly remind you the difference of the difference between this excess charge and the free electrons. In a conductor, um, as we discussed in class, you have the atoms, like let's just take copper as an example. So you have all these copper atoms. We discussed in class how each of these copper atoms has one electron in its absolute outermost shell, and that one electron barely has any affinity to its parent nucleus. So each of these atoms has a loose electron. And these electrons really can do whatever they want. They can go wherever they want inside this material. Um, they are they move around almost like the uh, molecules of an ideal gas. So these electrons have complete freedom to move around where they want. Usually most materials are neutral. So if you count all of these free electrons, that will be exactly that the number of them will exactly equal the number of nuclei that you have. And so uh, each of these nuclei would be positively charged without its free electron, I mean without its electron. And so the number of positive charges I'll just indicate that by putting some pluses here. The number of positive charges and the number of negative charges will be the same if the material is neutral. Now, when we transferred extra electrons, the material is no longer neutral. So the extra electrons that we transferred are the, I'm drawing them as dots over here, uh, they are the excess charge. So the claim is that any excess charge given to an isolated conductor lives only on the surface of the conductor. So how do we prove this? So to prove this, we first have to consider a, a fact, which is the following. For in an isolated conductor, the electric field inside the conductor is always zero. So for an isolated conductor, like our block over here, I'll just draw the block like this. In an isolated conductor, 
the electric field inside the conductor is always going to be zero, always. Um, it will be zero if there is nothing, no, no influence on the conductor like it is right now. I, suppose you bring in a charged object. So let, let's say I bring in this charged block which is positively charged. I bring in this charged object and put it right in front of my conducting block. Even then, the electric field in the interior of the block will be zero. Let's try to understand why. So the moment you bring in this charged block to, and put it to the left of our conducting block, conducting block, what happens is that this conducting block produces an electric field. I'll draw some of the electric field lines. And what this electric field does is that it acts on the electrons, the free electrons inside this conducting block and attracts them. So we know that negative charges are always pulled in the direction of the electric field. So that means these free electrons inside the conducting block will start aggregating at near the edge of the block. And I'm drawing the free electrons as these dashes, minuses. So they'll start aggregating over here, right? So as more and more electrons start aggregating over here, you have bare positive charges left behind over here. So the moment you pl place this charged block to the left of our conducting block, you have this situation in the conducting block where electrons start aggregating on the left side and positive charges start uh, are left behind on the right side. So effectively you have positive charges on the left, on the right and electrons on the left. Now these positive charges and uh, electrons will have create their own electric field. So the electric field produced by these positive charges and electrons inside the block will now look like this. You know that positive charges produce electric fields away from them and negative charges produce electric fields that point towards them. So as a result of having positive charges on the right and negative charges on the left, you will have an internal electric field which points in the opposite direction. Now this internal electric field will keep on growing uh, because more, as more and more charges accumulate on the left, until it is equal in magnitude to the external electric field that is marked in blue, uh, that's produced by the external object, right? And so at that point, the electric field, the total electric field inside the conductor would become zero. When the internal electric field produced by the rearranged charges cancels out the external electric field produced by um, the external influence. So at that point, the electric field will become zero. All right. So basically the reason that the electric field inside a charged conductor is always zero, even in the presence of an uh, external uh, charged object, is that the internal electric field produced by the rearrangement of charges in the conductor. When I say charges, I just mean the free electrons in the conductor cancels out the external electric field. And as a result of which, there is no uh, electric field, no net electric field inside the conductor. So no net electric field in the conductor. So once that happens, there is no incentive for the charges to move anymore um, because the electric field inside the conductor is, has become zero. And so the charges are at rest at that point. And, uh, the, and, and this conductor will have uh, some negative charges on its left side, positive charges on its right side. And we have already talked about this situation on the very first day. This rearrangement of, of charges inside a conductor is called induction, electrostatic induction. 
So basically, I'm just talking about induct, talking about anything new here. It's the same thing that we've discussed earlier. All right. But now you can see that the result of this is that it cancels out the external electric, it produces an internal electric field, which will cancel out the external electric field, as a result of which inside the conductor, there is not going to be any net electric field. And so the point is, and so coming back to the, the, the fact that I wanted to talk about, in an isolated conductor, the electric field inside the conductor is always zero. Okay. All right. So now, using this fact, we will prove that there is no excess charge in the interior of the conducting material. So to prove that, let's just go back to our block over here that we've applied some excess charges to. So the excess charges are over here on the surface. And I'm going to prove that the excess charges that you've put on this conducting block are only on the surface. There cannot be any excess charge in the interior of the block. That's what I'm going to prove now. How am I going to prove that? I'm going to use this fact that I just mentioned, and I'm going to say that everywhere in the interior of this conductor, the electric field has to be zero. That's the property of isolated conductors. The electric field is always zero in the interior of the conductor. All right. Now I'm going to use Gauss's law. So let's choose a Gaussian surface anywhere inside the block. So a Gaussian surface is just an imaginary closed surface. Let's just choose a Gaussian surface somewhere over here, right? And let's write down Gauss's law for this particular Gaussian surface. So Gauss's law states that the surface integral of the electric field over your Gaussian surface is equal to the net charge enclosed in your Gaussian surface divided by epsilon zero, right? So what is this surface integral going to evaluate to for this particular Gaussian surface? Remember that when you're calculating a surface integral, you're integrating the electric field, you're calculating the flux of the electric field over the entire surface. But what is this electric field? The electric field is zero because everywhere inside this conductor, the electric field is zero, right? So if the electric field is zero everywhere, its surface integral will also be zero. So you can see that zero is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon, epsilon naught, which means Q enclosed is equal to zero. What does that mean? It means that there is there cannot be any excess charge inside this particular Gaussian surface, because if there was even one extra electron here over and above the number of positive charges that you have, number of uh, nucle positively charged nuclei that you have, then the Q enclosed would not be zero. The Q enclosed being zero means that the sum of the positive charges and the sum of the electrons inside this Gaussian surface has to exactly equal. So that means none of these extra electrons that we supplied are in this particular Gaussian surface. Now, similarly, I could move this Gaussian surface anywhere else I want. I could move it over here. I could move it over here. Anywhere in the interior of the material, since the electric field is zero, the surface integral of the electric field over any Gaussian surface in the interior of the material will be zero. And as a result of that, Q enclosed will be zero as well, which means that it cannot have any of the excess charge. So where can the excess, where is the excess charge going to be? Uh, where can it be? It can only be on the surface of the conductor. So we now see two very, to summarize, we there are two very important, uh, we'll just learn two very important properties of an isolated conductor. Isolated conductor, which we'll keep repeatedly using. One is that in the interior of an isolated conductor, the electric field is always zero in the interior of a conductor. This has some in interesting practical applications which we'll talk about in class. And the second important fact is that, and this we proved uh, using Gauss's law, that any excess charge on the conductor 
excess charge like if you charge up the conductor any the ex any excess charge that you've supplied to the conductor always resides on the surface of the conductor okay 